Guess who's back? All right, yes, it is Shayna here. I am back from my very, very extended leave of absence. I know, I am so happy to be back on YouTube. I really did miss creating these videos and sharing my wisdom because gosh, the world really does need my wisdom more than ever. Thank you to those who stuck with me through thick and thin. I enjoyed emailing with you and keeping in touch. And if you're watching and you're like, wait, what? I want to be pen pals with you. Just sign up for my email list. The link is underneath this video. The big question, the million dollar question is, where the heck have you been, Shayna? Sipping margaritas on the beach. I wish. I have been working tirelessly, tirelessly on that something big for you. It's just taking so much longer than I ever anticipated. But I finally have a concrete date for the big launch, yay! So specific details coming to you right after the new year. Pinky promise, I swear, cross my heart and hope to die. Anyway, in lieu of how much focus and energy I've dedicated into this big project, today I wanna talk to you about distractions and specifically overcoming them as you work hard toward your goals and dreams. Let's go. I'm Shayna and I love sharing ways on how to better yourself and how to create a beautiful life. Okay, so you have an idea to create something, build something, take what's merely a vision in your mind and bring it to life. That's the easy part. And then life gets in the way. Your friends are texting you, let's hang out. And the new season of your favorite show just started. What to do, what to do. I know what to do. Number one, get very clear, crystal clear on your big goal. If you're just like, mm, I wanna start my own clothing line. And that's it. It's not gonna cut it. Every little microscopic step should be written down on a master to-do list, okay? Number two, be two steps ahead of distractions. You know they're inevitable, so cover your ass ahead of time. For example, I literally sent out a text to two of my good friends out here while working on this big project and I just said something like, hey, I apologize in advance to both of you if I'm a bad friend for the next few months until my launch, but I'm always down for a coffee shop slash work date moving forward though to kill two birds with one stone and yada, yada, yada. This was me putting a disclaimer out there so that A, I wasn't continuously put in a position where I had to fight through the temptation of going out and B, they understand why I'm denying invites left and right. Number three, create deadlines for yourself. And if that's hard for you to do, you must have somebody else hold you accountable to these dates. Because think about it, you know, if your boss at your day job said, hey, I need these tasks completed by November 3rd, you would get those tasks done, otherwise probably risk losing your job. So if it was the night before November 3rd, which would be November 2nd, and you're still working and there's a concert in town, you're gonna pass on the concert, right? So you wanna create that same sense of urgency for your own personal tasks because they're just as important, if not more important which is why it's important to remember your purpose, why you're working so tirelessly toward achieving this thing. Because if you lose that sense of why, you're in a little bit of trouble. It's that burning desire to get to the elusive finish line that's critical day in and day out in battling distractions. You've gotta have that fire and that deep hunger. Number five, schedule in distractions. First, you kind of want to pinpoint what your biggest personal distractions are and then simply schedule them in. You don't want to avoid them altogether. It's kind of like a smoker who tries to quit cold turkey. The chances that they light up are increased, right? So give yourself permission to take breaks and do that thing that's banging on your door every now and again. I'll be right there. 
on my way. Number six, turn off electronics. Now, I'm not 16 years old. You know, I, I know I look it, but I'm not hard to believe. So I don't have an outrageous number of text messages or the attachment to my phone that this younger generation has. Scary, isn't it? So personally, I don't feel like I need to completely turn off my phone when I'm working. But if you have kind of an obnoxious amount of calls and texts and notifications coming through your phone, then just turn it off. Because in fact, studies show that it takes 25 minutes, 25 minutes, to get back into the swing of things after being interrupted. That's a lot of wasted time. If not, I suggest at least opting out of notifications from like Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat and all that good stuff. And last but definitely not least, remove physical clutter. My boyfriend makes fun of me all of the time because my home, my living space has to be super clean and decluttered and organized before I sit and work on any task at my desk. But I'm telling you, clutter and messiness is a significant form of visual distraction. Everything in our eyesight pulls our attention. So if you have a lot of crap and junk that's just laying around, that's a lot of focus you're losing. So you just wanna make it a practice to clean up and make minimalistic living your norm. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Next week, I'll be piggybacking on this video with how to make the time for anything and everything. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do that now. And of course, like this video if you enjoyed it. And I will see you next Wednesday. Bye.